Hello, this is Ray. Welcome to my tutorial for this elegant blossom manicure. The color scheme of this look can be easily changed to suit any theme. It's a really good look for wedding season or is super work appropriate. This design will also work really well on any length nails. Remember to subscribe for weekly nail art tutorials and inspiration. So I'll begin by listing the items that I used. You will want to collect similar items to recreate this look, but you can adjust the colors as necessary. You'll need a base coat, and today I'll be using Hollow Taco Long Lasting Base. By Moonshine Manny, Hi Ma, Hello Pussycat. You can substitute this color for any polish that you like, and it has enough contrast to be easily seen next to your other base color and your stamping polish. Hollow Taco Duct Tape Gray. I do recommend using a fairly neutral color for your second base coat. I'll be using my favorite color of stamping polish. You can probably tell by the condition of this bottle. And this is Frozen from Maniology. Now you can use any color of stamping polish that you like, but I think it looks most delicate with a shimmer. And you do also want to consider the contrast between this and both of your base colors because you do want to be able to see this over both of those. Also for maniology, I'll be using sticky base coat and smudge free top coat. From Moonshine Manny, let's go quick dry top coat. A good top coat is essential for creating a good long lasting manicure. I'll also be using two different cuticle creams to keep my cuticles protected and healthy. Barrier butter from Cuter Cuticles and cuticle cream from Burt's Bees. And I'll be using Maniology Stamping Plate M019. I'm going to begin by removing last week's manicure. I unroll a cotton ball and cut it into small pieces about the size of my fingernails. After I have enough pieces cut, I put barrier butter around my cuticles to just protect them from the acetone. It isn't a big deal to get a little bit on your nails. It won't change the effectiveness of the removal. Next, I'll wet a piece of cotton with acetone, put it on my nail, and cover it with a nail clip. You can use foil instead of a clip, but the clips are really easy to use and are reusable, so if you don't already have a set, I really do recommend purchasing one, and I'll add a link for these to my description. I'll soak these for about 10 minutes, then I will remove the clips and wipe my nails with the wet cotton. Then I remove any leftover polish with a cotton swab dipped in acetone. Next, I'll push back my cuticles gently with a glass cuticle pusher. and file my nails to shape, first with an emery board, and then I'll finish it with a nano file. Now my nails are ready to be polished. I start with a base coat, and this will protect my nails and help prevent staining. Let this coat dry. So I like to wait about 10 minutes between coats when I have enough time. You do definitely want to wait at least three minutes. Now there's no maximum dry time between coats, so if you do need to stop in the middle of your manicure to go do something else for a little while, you can always come back and add another coat later. Now I do recommending a top coat if you're taking a long break, because that will keep the rest of the polish underneath from chip chipping or smudging. And I've never had any issues with adding polish over a top coat. Now I'm going to apply a coat of my primary base color, which is coral, to my pinky finger, my index finger, and my thumb. Then I'll paint my middle finger and my ring finger with my gray polish, which is my secondary base color. Mm -hmm. 
let that coat dry and then I'm going to add a second coat of both colors. I'll let that coat dry and then I'm going to add a third coat of just the coral polish. I'm going to do this because this is a light color and looks best in three coats. It's also a very dimensional polish so it just adds a little bit of extra depth to it. I'm using a cleanup brush dipped in acetone to just clean up around my cuticles to keep it neat as I go. I'm going to take my stamping plate and apply some stamping polish to my chosen design. Then I just scrape off the excess and pick it up with my stamper. So today I'm going to set that aside to dry for a little bit. I'm going to pick up a second design with a second stamper. Once I'm sure that my outline is dry, I'm going to take a detail brush and add coral polish to each flower on the design. I'm going to then repeat that with the second stamp as well. And you want to make sure that those are dry before you move on to the next step. I apply a sticky base coat to my ring finger and my middle finger. I'm going to let that dry for about a minute. Then I'm going to take my stamp and press it onto my nail. I'm going to lift it very carefully just to make sure it's sticking properly so that I don't accidentally pull off part of the design. I'm going to do the same thing with the second nail as well. I'll give that just a little bit of time to dry, then I'll add my smudge-free top coat. I only need this on the nails with the designs. I'm careful to not wrap this polish around the tip of my nail. I'll let that dry just a little bit and then use acetone to remove any excess stamping from my cuticles. Let that coat dry and then I'm going to seal in all of my work with that quick dry top coat. My last step after my top coat dries will be to add cuticle balm and take some pictures of the work that I put in. I would absolutely love to see your pictures as well, so if you took some inspiration from this video, please tag your pictures with the hashtag RayIDidThem on Instagram, and I'll try to feature your manicure in an upcoming video. Check out my description for product links and discount codes, and please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Much love.